So this is lesson four in the iOS learning path, and this lesson is all about properties and methods. We're not going to teach you everything about properties and methods, but we're going to touch on the surface a little bit so that you can get a better understanding of what's going on as you dig through the source code of your project. So from the last lesson, picking up where we left off, um, we created a, a UI view and we added it to the screen and then we erased that and then we created a UI view controller and we started to work with that. And so we created this, this root view controller, which was a name that we chose for our class. And then we instantiated an instance of that. We created an instance of that class and we called that instance my root view controller. And remember that class files have, um, cl classes have two files in Objective-C. There's a .h um, or an interface file and then a .m which is an implementation file. And we were working on the view did load method. So when we were working in the view did low method, we said self.view set the background color. So technically what that's called, this is called setting a property. And so the property, the property, is that how you spell property? No, no E, is background color. And then the method is set background color. So how did I know that I could set the background color, or how did I know that it had a property of a background color? And that's a good question. And so you're going to run into this time and time again when you're working with Objective-C and, and iPhone projects. You're going to be wondering, what are the properties of this object, and what are the methods of this object? So the easiest way to learn that is to look it up. And you can use the Apple documentation. So in this case, we're working with the view, and so this is a an instance of a UI view and we know that. So if we jumped over to Google and we just typed in UI view and we chose UI view class reference, we can see, thanks to Apple, that there are all kinds of properties and methods for a UI view. So another example would be, and probably a better example, is let's say we were working with a UI text view. And again, we, we know that this is a subclass of a UI view, but how do we know what properties and methods are available on the UI text view? So if we search UI text view, I'll go back to Google, and we search UI text view and we look at that class reference, we can see that it, in, it inherits from a few different views. There's the UI view that we talked to, and it has properties and it has methods. So if we look at these properties, these are all of the different things that we can change about our UI text view. And then methods themselves are a little bit different, but let's stick with properties for a second. So if we wanted to set editable, or if we wanted to set the font, or if we wanted to set the text itself, these are properties. So let's go back here and create a UI text view, my text view equals, and we did this in the last lesson, UI text view allocate some memory, initialize it with a frame. Boy, my typos are back. init with frame. We'll use core graphics and we'll say rectangle make 10, 10, 150. The size isn't, or 20, the size isn't, is not important at this point. So we have text view, and then we'll add that text view to the, to the sub view. Self.view, add sub view, my text view. Okay, so there's a UI text view, and we've added it to the screen. So before we add it to the screen, and you could do it afterwards, but I prefer to do it beforehand, what if we wanted to set, set a property of it? We, you saw me do um, my text view set text, and then we did something like this is text. But how do I know what properties I can set? So all we need to do is look at the documentation for the text view, the UI text view, and these are all the things that we can set. So we could set text color, we could set text, we could select set a lot of different things. So let's choose text. So what this is saying in the documentation is, is this property is, is um, it's easy to understand what it is because it's called text and we can make some assumptions about that. But this property accepts or requires an NS string which, which I know because I'm a programmer this is another object but we don't need to get too complicated but the point is is when you're setting the property of an object 
you have to you have to give it something. So in this case, we're giving it a string of text. That's what this is right here, a string of text. But let's say that we wanted to set the color, which is called text color. See, in this case, it's expecting a UI color. And you saw me do that too. So I can't just say my text view set color, because that doesn't exist, right? No color. But maybe I can do set text color. I know that exists because we're right here, text color. So set text color expects a color. I can't just say black. And the reason I can't just say black is because black is not a UI color. Black, Xcode and iOS don't even know what the word black means. So it needs another object. And that's what the little asterisk means, is it needs an object. So I need to pass it a UI color, black color. Now that will work. So there's lots of different ways to do this, but I could also do blue color. So if we ran this right now, oh, it's telling me I got a typo here somewhere. Boy, I'm just like not paying attention to all these things. If we ran this right now, we're saying, set the background color of the view to green, create a new text view, make it this size, set its text, and then set its background color. So those are properties. So the next thing we need to talk about are methods. So in methods, it's a little bit different. And let's use a different, um, let's use a different example. Let's set up a UI web view. UI web view. You'll notice some similarities here as we go. My web view equals UI web view allocate some memory, initialize with a frame, core graphics make us a frame, 10, 10, we'll say 50 um, wide, actually let's say 300 wide and 300 tall, and then let's say self.view add subview my web view. So at this point, we're just going to get a little web view on the screen. It's not going to do anything because we didn't tell it to do anything, but there's our web view. So we can do all different kinds of things with this web view. So let's look at the UI web view in Google, see what the properties are for the UI web view and methods. So here's the properties. These are all the different things that we can, we can set with this web view. And then these are the methods. So instance methods are things that we tell it to do actions that we tell it to do. So in this case, let's do something like, let's load an HTML string. So the method itself is called load HTML string, but you'll see here that's a little bit more complicated than setting the color. So in the when we set a property, it's just going to take one single thing. So let's go back, no, we don't need to go back, but when we're calling a method, it might take several different, these things are called arguments when I say it takes one single thing. So in order for us to load an HTML string, we need to pass it a string, and then we need to pass it what's called a base URL, which we don't need to get into. But I do want you to understand that we need to provide this method two different objects, an NS string and an NS URL. So Let's load this HTML string just so we can show you how to, how to actually tell our web view to perform an action or to, to trigger a method. So let's make a string because we're going to need a string to load and we'll just make some HTML. So we'll say HTML and then body and then let's do um, a span style equals color um, red. This is just HTML. This is some red text. And we'll end our span. We'll do a horizontal rule. And then we'll say more text. We'll end the body. And we'll end the HTML. So there's a string of some HTML. That's just what we would call an HTML snippet. So let's ask our web view to load that string. And we're going to use the load HTML string method. And one little cheat that I always do is I usually copy the method and then paste it on my screen temporarily. And you can comment it out too if you'd like. 
That way you've got little notes in front of you. So my web view, load HTML string. We're going to pass it the string object. And then we're going to tell it that the base URL we want to use, we'll just pass in nil. And nil's not important right now, but just know that we're, we're basically only passing this nil object to satisfy the requirement of the method. So create a web view, add it as a sub view, create a string, call a method for the web view, and see what we get. So this is just a really simple example of how to call a method or how to trigger a method. So there's our HTML. So properties and methods are far more complicated than this, but I do want you to get in the habit of just jumping online or using the, ref the documentation that you have on your computer and looking at the properties and methods for the type of object you are working with and give it a little bit of time and you'll get real good at setting those properties and calling those methods.